All right. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, this idea of rethinking transcendence um, and, and, its, and its associations. Rethinking transcendence and its associations. Uh, Badu, uh, Badu has made me, uh, at least provoke me to rethink the idea of, of transcendence. And of course, uh, the way theology, at least the popular move of theology, is uh, that we need both, that we need a dialectic of tra transcendence and immanence. Uh, which I think has been so far the best answer that we don't necessarily eradicate transcendence, but it, it is paired with a dialectic of imminence in there. Um, the, it seems like the, the typical understanding of transcendence is the fact that there is some type of other higher world um, beyond ours, Transcendence typically is associated with some type of beyondness, right? But what becomes problematic about the, our current conception of transcendence, as philosophy points out, is that transcendence leads to this kind of denial um, of our current situation. Um, and it can also ironically be used to sort of maintain forms of oppression and, and, and authority um, by this promise of some beyond, right? Um, whether it be afterlife, um, heaven, um, some type of form of transcendence. Um, so, so those are some of the dangers and, and we found some of those dangers in, in the mystics um, where they sort of isolated themselves from the world um, and they didn't really participate uh, in anything. They sort of got, um, some of them, not all of them, some of them sort of got a, a kind of perverse enjoyment to the ecstasies of uh, their prayer rituals uh, and so on. So what, what, what does it mean now to rethink the idea of transcendence? Um, I want to take the, the popular Christian sentiment of in the world, but not of it. Uh, I think for me, in the world, but not of it is the perfect definition of transcendence. But it's not reducible to... Um, I don't think it should be affiliated with some type of otherworldliness. Um, if I were to simply put my notion of transcendence, it would be simply to say that um, in our paradigm, in our paradigm, paradigm today, uh, we can we understand that ideology to some extent is inevitable, right? It's sort of like what constructs our world. Uh, to some degree. Ideology is what constructs our world. And so transcendence would, uh, for me, would be the idea that actually we are in the world of ideology, but we're not of the ideology. That we somehow maintain a distance to ideology, but we also understand that ideology um, is inevitable um, that there will always be a new form of ideology and I ideology will sort of always perpetuate and exist. Um, so in that sense, I think there is room for transcendence, not to necessarily, it's, I guess you can say it's when transcendence becomes an ideology and this is the, the danger that philosophers like Badu and, and Zizek kind of all warn us about is when transcendence becomes an ideology. But we can look at transcendence um, as a way to answer to ideology, 
rather than um, it becoming an ideology. You could say transcendence is a sort of a mode of being that is able to um, ward off or be in a position where you distance or at, at a distance of ideology um, rather than its full eradication. Um, and, and you could say that, you know, heaven, the notion of heaven or the end of times is kind of this sentiment typically. It's the, uh, you know, the, the religious sentiment that, you know, eventually Jesus will come and everything will be eradicated. Um, and then finally we can go to heaven or some of us go to hell, you know, so on. Um, this otherworldliness that is perpetuated with the idea of transcendence. Um, it becomes interesting to me in the sense that uh, we can almost affiliate transcendence with, um, you know, a going through. But for some reason, the idea of transivity, of, of going through something, um, became affiliated with the notion of going higher or something like that. Um but I don't think it has to be affiliated with this notion of, of going higher, of, of reaching some type of otherworldliness. I think transcendence uh, can simply be viewed almost like a sort of Hegelian um, sublimation, so to speak. Um, that I think the error with transcendence is that we somehow put a stopping point at transcendence, I think. And that stopping point is what is when transcendence became an ideology, at least in my opinion. Why? Because then transcendence became affiliated with, um, you know, otherworldliness, heaven, um, Union to reach finally reach union with God, um, all these other types of union that the that at the stopping point of transcendence was union. But what if we were to entertain the idea that transcendence can exist without union, without some type of uh, discourse of end? And so I think it's possible to, to rethink this notion of transcendence, but it becomes curious as to whether uh, we, we want to keep calling it transcendence. Um, and, and this is the, you know, this is the difficult part um, because if you remain with the word transcendence, then um, you always have to couple it with uh, you know, explain to people what you mean by transcendence. And so it, it becomes interesting to whether transcendence can remain as a word, as a term, and be rethought. Um, but the dangers of it being rethought uh, as, and still remaining the term as transcendence is that it leads to misunderstanding and um, immediate assumption you become you could say a victim of immediate assumption right that when i say something like oh god is transcendent they would say okay well we've why why are you perpetuating the sort of same medieval theology uh, but um, i do think that transcendence is embodied in that christian sentiment of in the world but not of it I really like that idea because then um, to be in the world would not necess necessitate uh, uh, an otherworldliness, actually, right? Not an otherworldliness, but a almost a complete infatuation with being in the world, but not of it. Um, and so I think it, it definitely calls for a rethinking of what do we mean by this in in this versus ofness. What did what, what do we mean 
What does it mean to be in the world, but not of the world? Um, and the way that I'm interpreting this in the world and not of the world is that um, in some ways, uh, this comes down to the idea of choice, that you come into a situation, a deterministic situation, your birth, your religion, uh, your family, your race, your whatever, um, you come into some type of deterministic situation. Um, they can be situations. Um, but to be in the world and not of the world is sort of like almost like a double negation, I would say. If we could think transcendence as a kind of double negation, that in order to be in the world and not of the world, um, you're first actually of the world. <laughs> that is the difficult part. You're of the world. Um, and then you have to do this weird maneuver where you realize that of the world is not the world. It is, you could say, the Lacanian stage. It is not... It, it is not in the world. It is the Lacanian stage. It is of the world. Um, and then so transcendence would be this I, uh, idea that it's to be in the world so deeply that you know that uh, that you understand that whatever is being proposed is almost basically um, not not it um, and in this case I'm associating in with some type of infinite depth that I'm almost inverting uh, transcendence in terms of um, an in infinite an infinite nearness that I don't identify with the world. I'm not of the world, but I am so deeply immersed in the world um, with some type of uh, a depth, um, more depth than being simply identified with it. Um, and so, but in that sense, you could say it is otherworldly. Um, Um, but I think what it means to me is that there has always been two worlds, um, but we can look at these two worlds in the sense of two framings of the world. There is the world, uh, I guess Lacan's kind of is helpful here. There's the world as stage, and then the world that is sort of like outside of that stage. Uh, but you could say more than that stage. Um, and so in the world and of the world can be perceived as two modes of being for the world. Rather than perpetuating the idea that there is an actual other world or an actual afterlife or an actual whatever, um, we can think of transcendence as simply a frame of being. Um, but in order to get to that frame of being, I think uh, you have to start with the violence and the idea of some idea of the world. And that we start to understand through our relationships with others um, that actually what we know or the little that we know of the world is never actually the world as such. And so in this case, uh, heaven becomes almost like this um, kind of like cookie on a stick. <laughs> or cake on a stick, so to speak, to help you 
not get caught by the the ofness of the world. And I would say for me that is um, transcendence. Like transcendence probably has to do more with a kind of surrendering and um, letting. A surrendering and a kind of letting. Um, whereas of the world has to do more with this idea that I possess and know and have constructed my world as such and there is nothing else. But you see how you see how uh, transcendence easily became uh, an ideology because of this because transcendence became of the world in some sense um, ironically. Uh, for me, this is the uh, more ironic conclusion because, you know, the, the typical argument is that transcendence is um, so immersed with the other world. Um, but actually, I would say no. Uh, the, uh, the notion of the other world is because it becomes a product of the world. <laughs> you know, it becomes a product of the world. And so even the transcendence became a byproduct of the world. Um, and so what does it mean to have transcendence in the world? Um, and But people like Badu would respond with some type of imminence. Um, I rather um, associate it uh, with some type of depth rather than some type of vertical reach like uh, transcendence is typically affiliated with some type of vertical reaching up and grasping towards. Um, that the mysterious tremendum is imminent. It is in the world. And yet there is something about that imminence that is, has a depth to it. And so you guess, you guess, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm almost attaching imminence, uh, an imminent transcendent. <laughs> you could say I'm almost trying to say Im imminent transcendent would be this idea that there is imminence, but um, because you're in the world, the imminence, but that the in the world has a sort of infinite depth to it. Um, that the mystery doesn't have to be otherworldly but the mystery can be a kind of depth um, and then so I think when I look at this notion of, of, of in the world but not of the world um, I'm associating the idea that to be in the world is to be attempt to be intimate with the depth of our being and to be intimate with the depth of our being or, or to be um, attempt to be intimate with the depth of our being this is transcendence that the very framework to be intimate with the depth of our being is transcendence that is how you know and encounter transcendence that it is more of a deeper immersion in the world. Uh, that in some ways the Christian paradigm doesn't necessarily, uh, it doesn't misconstrue per se that there is more to earth than the earth. But if we take that logic that there is more to earth than the earth, um, which was typically associated with the idea of heaven or union with God, um, we can propose the opposite. That the logic is the same, but the outcome is different. Um, meaning that the whole point was to have a kind of intimate relation to the world, to be in it, not of it, to be in it, to be in, in the situation, um, in the relation, 
as such that you discover transcendence. And that transcendence is this frame of being, rather. And that from the beginning, uh, maybe this is the difference, that maybe from the beginning, transcendence was a frame of being, that you have some type of framing. But we got confused with this, but we mistook the, the byproducts of this framing meaning heaven, union with God, uh, so on, uh, as transcendence. We, we've mistaken the byproducts of transcendence as transcendence. And then in that sense, we became of the world. And that, that's sort of like my ironic take. Um, so it, it would be interesting to propose the idea that transcendence is not some type of state that we're trying to reach, but actually transcendence has to do more with uh, a frame of being. And for me, this is, it, it still perfectly fits in with Christianity, in my opinion, um, because, uh, because of the sentiment to be in the world, but not of the world. It has to do with a kind of framing. The question is, or the trap is, that we associate the products or the content of transcendence as transcendence. And that is where I probably will um, die in a hill for, is that I'm going to say that transcendence is virtually empty. That the only reason why you're able to have such mystical content or visions or something is because it's a frame of being. Um, but not to necessarily associate the contents as transcendence. I would invert it. I would say actually... Transcendence is the frame of being that allows you to encounter that um, exical or, you know, uh, the ecstasy of that content. Um, but it is not the content itself. And I think perhaps maybe that was the mistake that actually uh, to take the content as it is, uh, is to be of the world and all of its content. Um, but rather to be in the world suggests something different for me. It suggests obviously a kind of framing. Um, and that to be of the world is also a kind of framing, but it is mainly uh, has a kind of enjoyment for the content. And so I guess this is my uh, polemical idea that actually what all the atheists and what all the, um, you know, other philosophers have griped about with transcendence is that actually uh, it's not so different. Um, that the, the other worldly, the notion of the other worldly, uh, the other worldly is it was always predicated on the, of the world. It was, uh, subsumed by the content of another world which was predicated on of the world um, rather than in the world um, but even atheistic and other philosoph uh, philosophical explanations also fall into the trap of of the world um, which we can say this is ideology um, in general um, so Obviously, because ideology is the, the threat, um, we have to, uh, it becomes interesting to implement transcendence uh, instead of as a goal or as a means, uh, as a kind of framing, a way of being, um, so to speak. But yeah, that's uh, my initial thoughts on transcendence and, and so on. But Anyways, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Thoughts. Okay, take care.